So, Farron, I've got uh, good news uh, for you. Uh, d during the break, I picked up um, 100,000 new followers <laughs> on Twitter, at Sam Cedar uh, on Twitter, and uh, they're all named Nicole Mincy. Is that a good sign for me? <laughs> Absolutely, as long as one of them happens to be the real uh, Nicole Mincy. <laughs> Donald All right, well, so tell us a story. I mean, who is, who is Nicole Mincy, and why did this become so relevant uh, in particular this week? Um, Nicole Mincy is basically a, 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 a young woman who had her identity stolen, hijacked, really, by a Twitter account, at ProTrump45. The purpose of this Twitter account, which does, in fact, have a... Uh, a picture of a young African-American woman on there. It turns out that picture was cropped from a stock photo available for purchase online. So don't even know if that's necessarily the real Nicole Mincy, but that's what they claimed her name was. And they said at pro Trump 45 is Nicole Mincy. And so the purpose of this Twitter account and the pro Trump 45.com website was just to put out pro Donald Trump memes those fun little pictures uh, that you see retweeted, uh, you know, 20 times after Donald Trump sends out a tweet, they'll get on there and reply with just one of these, we love Trump, uh, retweet for making America great again, things like that. Well, Donald Trump this past weekend decides to personally thank uh, Miss Nicole Mincy at Pro Trump 45, which prompted, uh, I guess, journalist to finally look into, okay, who in the hell is this uh, Nicole Mincy? Turns out pro Trump 45 is not Nicole Mincy. We learned that Nicole Mincy is, like I said, this young woman who had her identity stolen, mm. used to create this pro Trump Twitter account and pro Trump website. So Twitter suspends the Nicole Mincy uh, 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 Twitter account, as well as dozens of others accounts associated with pro Trump 45.com. But honestly, that's just the beginning of the story. As it turns out, uh, this so-called Nicole Mincy has been something of a mythological right-wing hero for many, many weeks now, to the point that the Daily Caller did a profile on the great Nicole Mincy, who didn't even exist. They did an interview with a person who wasn't real. And so they, wait a second. Wait. So what? What? I mean, have they have they recanted on this? How did they do a? I don't understand. <laughs> as far as I've seen, they have not said that the interview was with somebody uh, who lied to them, saying they were Nicole Mincy. They have not retracted it. They have not, uh, again, as far as I've seen, deleted it or apologized for it. But it, you know, this is how the right wing. Operates. This is how Donald Trump operates. You could be real or fake. It doesn't matter if you love him. If you're saying how great he is, he's going to give you all the publicity in the world. The, the right wing held her up, did this massive profile on Daily Caller talking about how, you know, as a young African-American woman, she became disillusioned. Uh, with Obama because of how horrible he had been for the African-American community. And that's why she switched for Trump. Now, it makes a great story to help uh, uh, sell the cause of right wingism uh, to to African Americans, but it none of it was true. None of it happened. It's a fictitious history. They claim that she was born, you know, uh, uh, dirt poor and worked her way up. Is putting herself through school. She's doing all these, you know, typical Republican things. I'm not whining about being poor. I'm out there working for it. Uh, it, it it's such a right wing fantasy piece that it's a wonder anybody ever believed it was real. And that's what they've done with this poor girl, Nicole Mincy, who is a real person who's having her name, you know, dragged out as a Trump supporter when, you know, we don't know her politics, but she is not happy about what's happening right now. So there's a couple of things that, you know, we can expand on this. So first off, there are there are companies that create these uh, accounts, these fake accounts. They have them exist in the world. They build followerships. They build a back, you know, some type of uh, backstory essentially for them as Twitter users, and then they sell them uh, to other people who might want pre-existing accounts that they can direct that are that are fake accounts. Um, we know that one of the big stories to come out of the election was 
that the use of bots like this, about fake people, were used particularly on Facebook, but certainly on Twitter, uh, to create fake narratives that were supportive of, of Donald Trump. Um, we know this is an ongoing situation here. And, and so, you know, it's not just that they are, I think, the right is. And, you know, look, r r recall on day one when Donald Trump gave his, his uh, announcement after he came down on the escalator and then uh, announced that he was running for the presidency and that he was sure that not all Mexicans were rapists, <laughs> um, that in that audience you had a significant percentage of people who were paid to be there. Right. They were seat fillers. I mean, so there is no reason to expect that this strategy of creating fake bodies fake accounts, right? People who are there because they have been created or paid uh, to be there, that that would change uh, going forward. So it's not just a question of the right, you know, accepting at face value the existence of someone and then obviously clearly uh, <laughs> fictionalizing an interview, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't know how else you get this information. And it's not this is not just about we're so hungry to to delude ourselves about Donald Trump's support. It's um, we are willing to um, to lie to the American public about this because we've seen the efficacy of of these type of programs. They work, creates a great propaganda narrative that we can return to time and time again. And, you know, I, I, I don't think this is going to be the end of it either. You know, uh, independent uh, studies have shown about 55 percent of Trump's followers on Twitter are verifiable human beings. But that means close to 15 million could also be more Nicole Mincy's out there. And it, my apologies to Nicole Mincy. Uh, I know this isn't actually you. Uh, right. So if you're listening, uh, we're not trashing you. Just pro Trump 45. <laughs> so apologies to Nicole Mincy for all this hell you've had to go through this week. Yeah, really uh, stunning, and 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 I, I think we're going to see a lot more of this, and 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 I think that we we've probably seen a lot more of it than we realized up to this point, uh, and you know we're living in a in a different era era where where social media uh, impacts the 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 culture and the narrative. I mean, look, there's not that many people, frankly, on Twitter, on uh, on political Twitter, but uh, the the few who are, they set the narrative. They tend to be journalists. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Ring of Fire Radio.